Hey there, my name is John Beethan. We're back again with Chris Chase. And as usual, Chris is bringing uh, a special guest on. And uh, as usual, I'm sure it'll be like a really, really fun story. We're going to have a fun time because we here believe that if it's not fun, we're not doing it. So Chris, exactly. take it away. Well, John, I, I appreciate you asking me to, to do this again. I had a really good time uh, with Karen Odds and just telling that story. And I've got a lot of emails and I had a lot of phone calls and people reacting to how inspiring Kara's story was because she was someone who had to shut down two locations and then went virtual with her business and booked 115 appointments. I just talked to her, I think yesterday or the day before, and she did 266 hours in a uh, virtual um, business. Nice. So she's, what is that? Doubled um, since we talked to her last. So it's amazing. And that was like a week ago, right? Yeah, it's amazing. And so, and, and she's honestly, she's kind of like an angel right now. She's, she's my client, but she's like a guardian angel. I mean, I talked to her, I felt inspired. She's pumped up. She's like, what can we do? She's so motivated. Her spirit is just, you know, it's amazing. I, I just can't say enough about her. But when I was talking to you, John, because we got, you know, a lot of traction from that and it seemed to touch people. That's what I care about. I want to touch people. I want to tell stories. I want to talk about what we can do because we're going through a crazy time right now. And who came to my mind, top of mind was Jesse. As soon as I literally was done talking with Kara and you, John, Jesse crossed my mind and I reached out to him and said, Hey man, something special just happened. Something that kind of fits your brand and who you are and how you operate and what you do. I've been watching Jesse uh, for a long time, do things that are um, unique and, um, He's a pioneer in a lot of ways of what he does, although he has reached out and, and reached, you know, the, the mentorship of some pretty amazing people as well. And, you know, we all do that. We learn as we go. And we just try to get better every day. Uh, but I reached out to Jesse and I said, hey, because Jesse and I have worked together for a long time, you know, on the real estate side, on the branding side. Um, we've used, utilized each other's services quite a bit, but we have a good friendship, a great friendship. I mean, our friendship trumps everything. And um, we've been hanging out a long time as buddies. So it's nothing better than having a buddy that you can actually talk to and realize that person's giving you sound advice. And they're also a good business person for you as well as a relationship that you're going to have re for the rest of your life. So I reached out to Jesse and my wife was like, you need to call Jesse because he's one of those guys that I call, you know, when I, I need to like pick right. my brain and kind of, you know, open up a little bit or think differently. So I called him as soon as I was done with the Kara Dodds thing. And it was just like, he, it was almost like he was expecting the phone call. Like, I was like, Jesse, this just happened. And he's like, oh my gosh, like, how can I be a part of that? And he like knew, kind of knew where I was going. So I was like, hey, Jesse, how's, how's business right now? How are you navigating through this climate? What are you doing, you know, to uh, help your customers and continue to, to flourish and continue to do things, you know, the way you think they need to be done for the greenhouse group? And Jesse kind of opened up and, Jesse, why don't you just tell us a little bit about how you've been handling things. But as you start to do that, talk about, talk about the video you just created. Talk about maybe the Lionel Richie story, like parody that you did. Like Jesse does things that are, that are unusual, but it, it, they, they connect people and they, they pull people in and, and people want to like get to know him and, you know, have a relationship with him because he does these things that are amazing and marketable, frankly. Well, it's a beautiful on-ramp. Uh, what I'll do first off is uh, is thank you, John, for creating this space. And uh, you might have to change your name, man, because the herd not seen. I think we're uh, I think we're putting a little zoom to that uh, formulaically. Um, but well, th uh, Chris, thanks. Uh, actually, a lot of people know me as the Spielberg of podcasting. I was going to say, man, your doppelganger is in Hollywood right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I get it so much. I've had people buy me dinners because they insist I am. Beautiful. That's Thank you. I'll let you. Yeah, uh, I always get Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Kind of. I'll save you out of that, bud. Uh, Jeremy Renner, maybe, you know, yeah. if, uh, if he had a bit of a drinking problem. Okay, so yeah, anyway. Easy. Hey, the truth is, uh, Chris, uh, you said a wonderful thing. Shoes too big to fill. But the one thing that, uh, uh, that, so the spirit of what you said that I think might be applicable if someone's catching this and, you know, getting uh, – past our, our BS banter here for a little bit and get into some meat and potatoes is that you and I love a good conversation. And that's why we found each other, you know, our inner, our orbits intersected each other. And when they did, we both recognized it right away. 
You know, we love the long form. We love the depth. We love to flesh stuff out and it lives inside the conversation. So when you did call me that day and you mentioned this, I mean, how timely, you know, how applicable, because right there is resting on the shoulders of the zeitgeist of where everybody got just thrown into this, you know, reluctantly, you know, you know, screaming, kicking the entire way of how the hell do we keep things rolling here when I'm now confined physically to my house and I can't go out and do the things that I relied on before. Like, the old norm is dead and it was dead in an instant. It wasn't like something that we got to off ramp towards. And so we instantly sparked up one of those beautiful conversations that we have, you know, where we can pick up, we might not have talked in a month. We pick up like we just had breakfast that morning yeah. and we talked about how, well, this is basically your uh, unique ability. It's the vision that you saw for stuff well before most. It's the reason why you gravitated towards this category and you didn't just, hold up shop, throw up a tent and park. You constantly push that curve of innovation to be able to see a few moves down the chessboard from where the game's already been playing. So you've helped me tremendously build my brand and our greenhouse group. Or by the way, John, real estate consulting, mortgage planning right here in yeah. San Diego. And nice. very fortunate enough to be top 1% categorically of what we do, even though we're tiny, right? And we'll always be scrappy and startup mentality uh, to a fault. But you know, Chris has been a huge... Uh, reason why we've been able to not only hatch those evil schemes conceptually, but then also play them out uh, in real time uh, here. And I think a beautiful on ramp to the conversation of what I'm hoping we're going to talk about of how we can actually effectively make this shitty thing that's all happening to us actually pivot and be the greatest strength and opportunity that became of this. That's great because I'm feeling that a whole lot right now. I'm feeling like this is a tremendous opportunity for so many of us. That That's what I keep hearing from people that have been doing this for a while is like there's an opportunity to help. There's an opportunity that's out there. And those yep. are the silver linings that I keep kind of slowing myself down, which is so important, right? Because if you're in flight or fight all the time, you're not slowing down to think of that creative thing. So Jesse, let's, let's talk about Let's talk about what you just did for that marketing video. I think, would that be a cool segue? Well, I think what it does is it depicts the, incre the incredible and tremendous opportunity that already exists, that people maybe didn't take seriously enough or have the vision of how they could apply it to their own situation and their own businesses because they didn't need to because status quo was working and it was good enough. And let's be honest, I mean, the economy has been pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, for the last several years, you know, we always want it to be better. We've always got our vision boards up and our goals for growth, but you know, it, the tide's been pretty high for a while, you know, and uh, you know, like Buffett says, you know, you can always see who's wearing shorts once the tide rolls out. And I think that the digital space right now is going to be chief atop that list. So to the point, you know, I'm a real estate guy, you know, we got to come up with creative new ways to promote these properties when people can't, physically come to the houses anymore, at least when they do, it's in an essential category. It's mitigated to say the least. Okay. And there's a whole category of people that don't even want to leave the house, let alone go buy, you know, half a million, three quarter of a million dollar property right now and all this uncertainty. So got to be creative. And what an incredible opportunity to do just that using the resources, what we call the harem of who's right. That exists digitally out there in gig capacity. So, Case in point, and what Craig or, um, uh, Chris is talking about here is we had a new property that we were promoting, and it's a unique one. It's not one that's going to sell itself, right? So here comes the marketer, and while we're shooting video, normal, typical video, to showcase with the drones and all that stuff and shooting the photos, I slipped the uh, videographer an extra couple hundred bucks. I said, hey, stay late. I got an idea. So uh, while he was finishing up, I went in my car, and I wrote out some lyrics Right. And I've never done this before. This isn't like an old hat or an old trope that I fell into. I just got inspired in the moment. Right. Creativity, opportunity, inspiration, like what we're talking about, got inspired in the moment to think differently, think outside the box, wrote out you know, four or five different little hooks and um, had a track that was spinning in my head. Uh, you know, a popular sort of what was it? It was uh, it was bad and bougie, I think. Right. By Migos. Okay. John, I'm sure that's on your playlist, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it will be. Right. So, so went inside, you know, shut the door, closed it off, wrote a couple deals, took me about, I don't know, you know, 10, 15 minutes, went back inside, instantly imagined the entire shoot 
of what a music video would look like, right? Of course, right. with our mitigated resources, right? It's like a camera. I had one dude. I quickly uh, uh, arm locked him into being my um, uh, my extra, right? <laughs> and and then off we went. And the videographer's like, okay, what now? Okay, shoot this. Boom. What now? Shoot this. Boom. So he cobbled together this string of an extra hour or some shoots. He sent me the raw footage. I got a VA in the Philippines who cuts up all my videos already. Sent it over to him raw file, uh, raw file style. Say that 10 yeah. times twice. Then went on to Fiverr, found an artist, like a legitimate artist, okay? Like with credentials, you know, hip hop, the whole deal. Sent him my lyrics. I don't know, I think I sent him like 50, 60 bucks or something. Like, you know, like the definition of nominal. And in two hours, he knew exactly, got the vision in two hours. He cut the track, put it on the instrumental I wanted, sent it back over to me. Took about a day and a half for the edit. In two days, soup to nuts. With a couple hundred bucks, I shot my own real estate first ever rap video, you know, and uh, I'm not gonna proclaim that it went viral, but for my circles, it was viral, right? You know, so right. like in our little deal here in San Diego, most folks saw it, everybody was over the moon. And so that's the opportunity that we're talking about here, which was never on people's radars before because you didn't need it to be. Yeah. Right? So it's like now as we look to see opportunity, how we can actually take this, transmute it into something that we would never would have imagined that we never would have done because now we have to do it. And then all the while, like, man, that was there. That was possible the whole time. Well, now what's possible? Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm talking about, John. So like, that thing that Jesse did was super inspiring. It, it took my wife and I out of our state, right? So we did bath time routine. We did the dishes. Whoa, 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 Chris, Chris. No, listen, no, listen. No, no. We did the dishes. I throw on Jesse's video <laughs> and like life was fun and, and charming and, and jovial for the three minute video. And I said, this guy just does things different. I said, play that again. But I honestly didn't know the history or know the details from what he just said. I had no idea that he did that so quickly for a couple hundred bucks. I honestly, because I'm out of the loop with hip hop, I thought it was Drake. I thought that Drake happened to do some song about real estate or about some home that he bought. And Jesse made it work with one of his properties because most people aren't going to listen to the detail of the property or the detail of the song, the detail of the property and try to match them up like a puzzle. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's not the same property. Because from the from just casually watching, because Jesse's dancing, he's got someone else going. I mean, it looked like a music video, so you're more entertained than trying to sync up the details. But the fact is, the details match, and they, that's Jesse. And I think that that's a key point too, because if you're just catching this, you don't have the context of the video. It, I could imagine that 99.9% .9 of people are going to imagine me dancing like a jackass. Like, well, uh, Jesse, I, when when we're done, send me the link to the yeah, video, and I'll cut it into this video. On this yeah, but, fair enough. Let's play the video at the end of this, John. Okay. Yeah. Out. Fair enough. But my point, my point to make, because I think it's a salient one, is, is, is this isn't me trying to branch out and come up with a side hustle. Like, it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. Right? And I know this might be a whole separate conversation we get into, which we might not have the depth uh, to, 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 you know, to even tiptoe in right now. But just the concept that, you know, when, when you imagine, you know, Video 1.0, it's the selfie, right? It's the look at me, look at me, look at me. And I think that if you can see this as a tool, almost as a utilitarian, you can imagine that it's possible for so much more. Yeah, I'm in the shot. Yeah, I'm trying to proctor the feel and the whole thing and kind of keep it moving. But what I'm actually doing is I'm showcasing what, Chris? You're showcasing a property for a client. Yeah, the potential of it. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. the whole hook of the, yeah, of the yeah, track. Yeah. yeah. So, so there are some subjects and we are moving around and there might be a little lip sync going on, but it ain't about us. Yeah. It's right. You're, really you're actually, you're, a, you're a character in the video is what you are. Bingo. Yeah. He's helping get the property out there and you're actually getting a tour of the property. So you're looking at the views, you're looking at the rooms, you're actually doing a tour of the property, which once you start realizing that you're, yeah. you're and, and actually in my mind, I'm like, wait a minute, this is, this is working. Like the details are working. That's what was really amazing. But, Jesse pulls stuff off like this. So I'm like, I don't know. I gotta talk yep. to him. Yep. So, um, so one thing I wanted to say, Jesse, is that I think what you did is what I call, most people are like trying to think out the box, right? So I think what you did is actually created a new box. Hmm. And I'm really encouraging people to go a little bit further than just thinking outside the box. 
Well, and I think the opportunity and the reason why I took the time to bring it up is I want this to be helpful. I don't want this yeah. to be a, uh, a testimonial about what this one guy did this one time on this one thing that I watched. Right. Right. It's the idea that version 1.0 is, ed is entertainment and version 2.0 is like edutainment. Yep. Right. Like how yep. are you using the medium of, of video not to be whimsical, although that's fun. And Chris, you even mentioned the levity of how that found you guys while doing bath time. Uh, was <laughs> for, our, for our kids. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, good. I just want to give you that's, that's, that up. That's an important clarification. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Uh, right. It, is that is that it doesn't just have to be that, right? It, the idea of, of just thinking a move down the chessboard, again, to bring that metaphor back into awareness of how can you use video? How can you use it in a creative or entertaining way? But how can you still drive the narrative of the product and the message you're trying to get across through it? Yeah. And, you know, working with Jesse, that's the one thing that um, has actually motivated me and inspired me in my own business. He has a customer service component to help and to kind of uh, nurture in a way along the way. Even, even, you know, we got our home with Jesse when the home was done, there was three or four things that happened within the next six months that touched your heart. And I don't want to talk about them in detail because, you know, it, I don't want to put him on the, on the block, but my wife and I still, well, for example, we, we cooked Omaha steaks this weekend. We, how long has it been since we got in our home? You know what I mean? He just, he just, he's like, this is for you to enjoy your new house. This is for you to enjoy your barbecue in your new backyard. Like he's, he, he creates moments. And from the moment you walk into his facility, his office, and his wife has played a big part in this, his team has played a big part in this, it's an orchestrated thing to make you feel comfortable and to show you love and respect and to relax because he wants you to be present so he can listen to you and your vision and what matters to you as a family so then he can help you. And it's just, it's such a cool, cool experience. I mean, first time I ever met with him to do real estate and I'd been friends with him for 10 years, you know, I didn't even want to leave. I'm like, I'm so relaxed right now and I feel so good. I'm sipping on tea. We're talking about what the next five, 10, 15 years looks like in our life. It's therapeutic, yeah. you know? I, I appreciate that, that Chris. And, and um, you know, what came up for me, which is a beautiful tie back into how you approach your domain categorically is we'll put a little ribbon on, maybe we'll just call this first chunk video, right? How to use video to leverage what it is that you're trying to do in a brand new world, in a brand new environment where the old things that got you there aren't gonna take you, like what got you here is not what's gonna get you there, mm -hmm. right? So it's like physical, we relied so much on the physical deal, okay? Right now, while we can't do that, the opportunity of reimagining how you can move the same needle, the same dif distance, but use digital. And one of the beauties of why you and I have worked so well together professionally for so long in so many different projects is, is that you got that. You understand intrinsically the vehicle of video because video conveys the emotion of the nonverbal communication that you can't get through print or still. And you do that so well with your branding. You do that so well with like, even like your website, even, even down to your graphic design. Everything is an emotionally driven conversation. It's about elegance, it's about excellence, and it's about efficiency. And I would even say effectiveness, even more so than, than efficiency. And I think that, you know, as we look at this right now, if video is maybe not something that you're comfortable, it's not the comfy pillow that you can just say, yeah, man, roll it spontaneously, I'm, I'm on, right? Maybe if you're on the other end of that spectrum, just the entry level of saying, hey, let me do my first one this time. Because guess what? I can guarantee one thing is true for me and anybody. John, I'm sure you'll hop on this train. My first video I ever did back in what, 06, was abhorrent. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, that's, how, that, that's how podcasters there. start too. Podcasters, it's always terrible, the first one. But right. you just keep doing it. You, you, you do put it out. You just keep doing it. Right? So maybe you're not going to shoot a music video tomorrow. But, you know, what, what can you do right now today to just get that party started? Because if you can work that in to what it is that you're doing, and I'm speaking just to the 101s right now, right? It's going to be a chasm leap, you know, it's, it, than, than where you are currently today. 
And then it's an incredible fulcrum to be able to, in a meaningful, efficient, cost-effective way, to deliver meaningful value also to your tribe of people in an ongoing capacity, right? And I'd love to pivot and maybe talk a little bit more about that, Chris. And actually, you know, what do you do to coach your clients on using video moving forward? So maybe now let's move to the 201. Yeah, I want to talk about video a little bit and I also want to parlay that into what John does because what John does is a huge thing for people right now and we're seeing it all over the place, the Zoom thing and people doing their own podcasts and all that. One of the things that came up last week in a networking meeting with John was there was a, uh, I, I don't know what kind of a doctor they were, but they were, they, they were starting to focus more on nutrition. They felt like nutrition was their, their calling. They wanted it to be about nutrition. They want to make people heal through food. And the person was so stuck on what to do. And I said, why are you stuck? And they said, well, I'm not comfortable with this, you know, the zoom thing. I'm not comfortable. I'm, I'm used to having people come here and visit with me and sit down and right. write them a curriculum. And I said, well, why don't you? And they said, I know I need to do social media, but I don't know where to start. I said, why don't you each day pick up your phone, do a, do a video, talk to the video and say what you think your clients would, would get value from or need to hear. It can be 30 seconds. It'd be a minute and just start to do that. So that's their first quote unquote video. And that person started to do that and people wanted to talk to them more and reached out and it almost made it look like, oh my gosh, this person's more available than we realized, hmm. right? So they're just waiting yeah. for the email to come in, they're waiting for the traditional phone call and all those things. You gotta put yourself out there and be vulnerable and, and talk about what it is you think would be helpful to your clients. Or you know, one of the things that, um, I'm actually going to be working on probably later in this week is I'm going to reach out to all my clients and I'm going to just be doing free consultation services. And it's because I want them to be able to pick my brain and to be able to think through things creatively to look for solutions on the things that they feel like they need to do. And I don't normally have the time to do that, hmm. but it's me throwing a bone out to them so they can talk to me and, and open up a little bit. And it could be 15 minutes. It could be a half hour or whatever but I'm trying to get people to open up a little bit about what they think it is they're supposed to be doing. Like, what's your purpose? Let's clarify the purpose. Let's, what's the problem we're trying to solve? And let's, let's think of a, a, a toe forward, a step forward. It doesn't have to be the, the finish line or the grand finale. Like you're saying, Jesse, it doesn't have to be that music video, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep moving. You know, a lot of people get so steel and they kind of freeze in this environment and it's about being inspired or, or helping each other navigate through it. I didn't really touch on the video thing as much, uh, but I, I, I think that, you know, obviously that's something that's super powerful is to be able to connect in through a video format because you're able to kind of see and you can feel the emotion, you can touch on it. John, why don't you go a little bit into the podcasting arena because I know you're seeing a lot of um, inbound leads and, and business and needs from that. In fact, we've been doing this for a couple of weeks now. We've never, never done this before because of this whole situation we're going through. Yeah. So what's, there's a lot I could talk about, but I think the thing that's really great about podcasting is, you know, it's, it's like I have a, the URL, heard, not seen us. So I've had a lot of people go, you mean I can actually do a podcast in my pajamas? Absolutely. So, you know, what I encourage people to do is just once again, start. And typically what I see is that people just, um, they get a little overwhelmed. Uh, they keep putting off starting a podcast because it seems really complicated and expensive. And the, the thing about it is it's very, very simple. And it's a place where people can actually be themselves. Like I loved at the top of this, um, Jesse, when you were talking about having quote, a, you know, a real conversation with Chris that is a lot, has a lot more depth than just talking about the weather. So I'm not bringing anybody into my studio right now, but I am having conversations remotely. And what I really love and appreciate about what I do for others is it's really just about holding safe space. Mm. So, and being a really good interview, you can ask some questions that actually, you know, can, you, you can ask a question that will take somebody down into themselves and really express who they really are and what their purpose really is. And it breaks down a whole lot of barriers just in an audit, auditory format between um, you and the person that might be listening. In other words, it creates rapport. And I really like video a lot. Um, I've been doing, of course, more and more video with Zoom and stuff, but um, 
you know, I keep going back to audio podcasting because it's very intimate. It's very one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, and I'm starting to see people, I did a presentation for the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. I'm actually going to take the video and clean it up a little bit before it gets posted there because I really want to give people um, a way to start listening to podcasts initially. So I unplugged my cable about 15 years ago when I discovered podcasting. And I can say for myself, I've created the best content in the world. Hmm. I mean, there's like 900,000 podcasts out there. There's only about 256,000 that are actually active. But, you know, I listen to the people like Sam Harris. You know, he has a podcast called Making Sense. Highly recommend people listen to it because he's a critical thinker, which most Americans, quite frankly, don't really have that skill set. Yep. So people get to experience what that's like when he's interviewing somebody that um, is at the top of their field. And whether it's about neurology or what's going on politically or socially or just anything at all. So I feel like when I'm listening to a podcast, and you as somebody that might want to start a podcast are, are going to feel the same way where people, I just feel like I am just like a bug on the wall or a fly on the wall listening to a conversation someone's having with another person. It's like overhearing somebody's intimate depth or thoughts. And of course, there's the whole business aspect. There's no better way to actually gain brand authority. Um, you know, through everything we do, but in a podcast, you know, it's like your voice can be your brand mm -hmm. or a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just really here to help people express themselves and make it as simple as possible without having to take off their pajamas. <laughs> so, so John, from maybe you can kind of elaborate just a little bit from, but from a business or a branding standpoint, how do you approach whether it's a solopreneur or an entrepreneur, like a sole proprietor, or maybe yeah. a small agency like mine, you know, or a larger company, how do you approach them and say, hey, if you want to start to promote your services and what you do and how you help and, and what value you bring to the world through your company, like how do you approach them on, on putting that into like a, a series or a podcast? How do you approach them on that? Well, I typically okay. take them through a process of story branding. Okay. So it's like you're, you, Chris, I know you're familiar with uh, actually sitting down with somebody with a new client and actually trying to wrap your head and their, and them in terms of developing a brand. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the first thing. So, you know, it's asking if you, first question I always ask, or people ask me the first question, what microphone should I get? And that is like at the end of the whole process. Depending on, you know, are you going to be doing, having a co-host, you're going to be solo, you're going to be doing interviews, and now it's like, you're going to have a studio? Probably not. That could all change in the, but I'll talk to them and I'll get a sense and a feeling for who they are. And then I'll take them through this process of um, really understanding what value they have and specifically who who is their tribe, their targets, whatever you want to call it. So as an example, if you're wanting to do a podcast for CEOs, what are you going to probably talk about? Or what is your show going to be around? Jesse might know, but I mean, I'll just tell you, CEOs golf. So you have to like, you guys know social media enough to know that you have to find out where your people are hanging out. So that's probably what you're going to design a show around. But the most important thing is don't design the show or what you're going to be doing based on just that. But like, what's your passion? So I do a, I produce a podcast for a really well-known attorney and her thing is dogs. She has like two or three of them. And that's the, that's, that's her kids. She doesn't have any other, she doesn't have any human kids, but those are her kids. So it's like, I have been encouraging her to talk about the dogs, not all the time, but it's like, you know, the dogs in her home studio will start barking and she's like, oh, we got to stop the recording. I go, no, bring them into the show. <laughs> bring them into the show and let people know that you're a real person. You've yeah. got dogs and your dogs act up and bark and just like everybody else, but they are a part of your family. Do you so help come up with the content for the shows or, or do you just guide it? How do you, how hands-on are you with the content? Well, uh, the, you know, there's lots of different directions to go in terms of the content. Um, 
a lot of times they'll uh, we're not scripting anything because then it sounds real canned yeah so i i kind of take jesse's approach i have you know it's like i help them get an idea and then just start bullet points bullet points bullet points so generally what we'll do is we'll come up with a kind of a schedule or an outline just like you would for posting social media a marketing calendar and mm -hmm. hit topics and topics and topics and then we'll start doing some bullets about what needs to be talked about do we who do we want to interview you know or what 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 do we want to generate you know so the length of the show makes no difference whatsoever joe rogan's show number one you know you listen to joe yeah Jesse? yeah most people do it's like what two three hours right and then there's grammar girl really really popular when she started, she was doing five minute episodes and she got really well known. Five minutes on some grammar tip. So it makes no difference the length, you just make the content great. Hmm. So, you know, so in terms of brand story development and then, you know, scheduling out as far as possible, and the most important thing is to be consistent. So if you've got a week, if you've got, you know, like, I recommend people spend 80% of their time in developing their content and 20%, including recording and stuff, and 20% on doing any kind of marketing. Yeah. So right now that's kind of my, my company is we've been totally focusing on our clients. Anyone that can do a consultation or, or do anything virtually still yeah. for the company, you know, if you're selling a product, if you're selling a purse or you're selling something like that, like that's e-commerce. That's like, okay, you found us, not purchased the thing. But if you're consulting and you need that human interaction, we're doing every, we're trying to promote everyone through video and through tele. Like you either do a phone call or you do a video. And what we're finding is a lot of the medical companies, the insurances are allowing them to bill just like they would if they were to come to their office for some of this stuff. And I don't know the details on that, but this is what I've been told by my clients that are being, you know, doing very well with it. Jesse, how are you continuing to do and move transactions right now for yourself. Um, like if someone came to you today and was like, Hey, I want to put this house in the market. Walk me through just briefly. Like, how does that transaction work? Yeah, I'd love to. I, um, I had a, a, a 201 on that, that, uh, I'd love to share, but I think if I might, uh, just sort of build on what John shared there. Yeah. Um, I love his approach of coming at it from how to tell the story. Lord knows there's been uh, many wonderful books written contemporarily about, you know, the whole concept of marketing through storytelling. So I want to double, triple, quadruple check that behind John's name there. Yeah, please do. Um, and, and by the way, wouldn't that be a cool Zoom adaptation for the future where like any one of the people could like give little thumbs up, like, dirk, 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 like good point, like dirk, 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 that was a good point, dirk, dirk, you know? Hey, doesn't it have that? Well, oh, okay, on the bottom right are yeah. your screen are reactions. Oh, you're kidding. No, watch. I'll do one. I'm trying here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but it's a one time though, right? Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Now I can't get the damn thing off my deal. Anyway, point back <laughs> it, is... It'll go uh, away. Oh, okay, cool. So it does go away. Look at that, dude. That's some real-time stuff right there. Cool. Glad I opened my well, big we trap. We could just do this correct. You know, Jesse and Chris. Yeah, just, yeah, you know. yeah. A little more disrupting. You know, um, I think that the opportunity right now is, you know, trust, right? Trust is the new currency. And I think if I could go even a step further, and this is a perfect, by the way, perfect uh, uh, um, architecture for this conversation of living in the digital world, right? Because that's also a hearkening back to why business is, is done so often face-to-face right, is because it's about building trust, right? So in this new world, how do we pivot? How do we still have that same level of trust? And I think that if, you know, if trust is the new currency, then the way it's traded is through insight. I think insight is, is where we're heading to now, which is also why the three of us love this long form. It's putting language to the long form, right? And I, you could almost kind of think of it like, I love the architecture of like, um, like a late night, talk show host, right? Like, you know, Seth Meyers or whatever, right? He's got a Hollywood starlet up there and they're pitching a movie. It's like, they've got what, three and a half minutes, maybe five. Yep. You're not, you're, you're in story. 
You're not in insight. You're in story in that moment. You're, you're just regurgitating pre-rehearsed stories of yourself, of the movie. It's a big pitch. And mm -hmm. I think that the great opportunity, back again, a re recurring theme for our conversation today organically, the opportunity here that Joe Rogan luckily picked up on as being a leader in, and John, you too, in this long form uh, uh, podcast capacity, is once you get past the 15 minutes, you start getting into insight. Mm -hmm. In that long form dimension, Chris, this is why you and I have, you know, you know, we've been fast friends here on this is because we can't wait to get past the 15 minutes of the small talk BS so yep. we can get to the insight. Mm -hmm. yep. Because insight is, is where that moment goes, where you're like, oh, right, something happens. So, and it's so like, Jesse, can I demonstrate it? Yeah. With you? Sure. So think of one moment in your life that was totally defining, a defining moment. Got it? What was it? I don't know why, but what came up for me was when I lost my mom at 14. So I guess, oh, I, guess wow. I guess that was one of the most defining. Something changed for you? Yeah, instantly. Yeah. Right, forever, right? And so uh, there, is, there is an incredible opportunity to create really valuable content. So John, to your point, content. Content first, 80% of it's content. I don't know about you. I don't know if it's true for anybody who might pick this up, you know, after we you know, hit the end button here and, and, um, and put this out to wherever we do, but it's hard to sit down for me. I'm talking personally to sit down and just crank out content, right? Oh, yeah. Like I can't, I can't do that. Right. Like at a keyboard by myself and my, nope. and by the way, that's another point is that nope. when I'm writing, it's a different part of my brain yeah. than when I'm talking, when I'm talking, I mean, it's a completely different consciousness. It's a completely different reality than when I'm writing. It might as well be two separate halves of the same person. Yes. And what I found to be incredibly true is, you know, I've been trying to record as much as I possibly can for as long as, you know, the democratization of these tools has been out there. So, John, you mentioned you've been doing this since 05. I want to say we started our first podcast in 06. Right mm. behind you, it immediately went into like, video series is you know through youtube and once that came online and and the goal has just been to record as many things as possible not because i expect anybody other than our moms to ever watch or listen to them that's but exactly because, right but because i know that when it's on when it's recording i'm on when the stakes are high i'm on neurons are firing at a really high rapid rate and i know that the best content's going to come out when I know we're recording, it's, it's a hack. Yep. I wish it weren't the case, but it's just true. And so, you know, so in this capacity right now, what we're doing is we're creating content, Yeah. you know? And so it's like maximum oral output, you know, you know, it's the old moon method. Like my buddy Dean Jackson says, you know, the multiplier of oral output because here's our content. And then the beauty to harken back to the uh, rap video trope earlier is that we can take this, we can throw it up on, you know, Otter AI or Trent or whatever. It automatically transcribes it. Then we can throw it over to a, a VA and they can cut it up and they can pull out good, it could be two or three blog posts right there. I already wrote the content. And in right. a really cost-effective manner, I can have it promulgated out. We're recording a video right now. Now we can actually go and make this a video. We can make this a four or five segment video. We can have four or five days of, of front stage content, visually appealing posts that go out to our social media channels. We could strip the audio and do podcast series. We can have blog posts, like just by having a conversation. Yeah, like, I know. And so, and that's a time where that was possible. Right. Yeah. And that's what I plan on doing with this episode. And the other one we do is like strip out the, and it's going to go on my, uh, what has my attention podcast. So it's seriously, you have my attention. This has my attention. This is huge. Yeah. This is so, awesome. yeah, 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 yeah. You're a little fired up, Jesse. Well, I mean, the truth is, you know, I don't want to go on an op-ed here, but, you know, I'm emotional. I'm a human being, just like everybody else. Chris, you and I were BSing about this earlier. You know, I had to find my own oxygen mask to put on first before I could give it to anybody. You know, once the kids got kicked out of school and we were in the home deal and, and everybody had to die and the economy was screwed. Like, 
I had to find my own true north on that first. And then as yep. soon as I got there, I instantly realized that um, I'm perfectly equipped for this. Like, this is the greatest thing that could happen for me because I was in cruise control, John. I wasn't utilizing my creative juices. Things were too easy for way too long. I'd wake up, we'd get a couple buyers, we'd get a couple sellers, we'd close them, we'd get a check, and the dance continued on to the same song. You know, so nobody wishes for this on anybody. It's going to be terrible. We're going to lose a lot of people that we love. It's going to be yeah. disrupting. A lot of us have already lost a gigantic portion of our, you know, assets and the housing market's going to get hit. All that stuff's true. You know, water's wet, rocks are hard. That's what's true. But at the same time, there's going to be an amazing shift of wealth that's going to get transferred for this. The people who are resilient, the leaders, the people who are disciplined and persistent, they're going to arise out of this like embers out of the ash or the phoenix or whatever deal you want to do. And we're in a perfect, uh, we're perfectly positioned, the three of us at least, and hopefully anybody listening to this, to be able to take full advantage of the pivot because we've been doing this for the last 10 or 15 years already. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, really well said. Speaking of spi uh, Pivot, one of my favorite podcasts is Kara Swisher and Scott Galloway's Pivot, P-I-V-O-T. Hmm. Uh, do you listen to this podcast much, Jesse? He just froze up. We got a freeze going on. So should we wind this up? However you, however you want to wrap it up, it's cool, but I, I, I think it would be so cool when we post this at the end of it to have just video. Okay. Yeah, you Yes. You know that I've been looking for a home over here in Lakeside? Mm hmm You know that I've been looking for a home in the mountains? Yes. What's got you so excited about this place? Potential, 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 potential. It's got potential. The whole place got potential. Potential, 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 potential. You got potential. Can you see the potential? 19 rooms, rooms, six bedrooms, rooms, four kitchens, yeah, yeah. five bathrooms, uh, two floors, floors, separate unit, unit. ADU. Woo. Man, this home, do it. Woo. Potential, 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 potential. Yeah. The view got potential. The mountains are central. Potential, 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 potential. Two autonomous units. It's got rental potential. Potential, 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 potential. It's got potential. Yeah. The whole place got potential. Potential, 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 potential. What'd you think, man? Thanks for showing me the house. I really yeah. like it. I can't put my finger on it. No. But I think it's got...